You did. No, I don't do it. I do it. Not that. I'll find a way. I'll see a thing. Don't do it. 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 Close to how hated Atlanta Square Pantis is. It has topped more worst of lists than any other episode of SpongeBob. Think of that. Think of what I've reviewed so far. Yeah, people hate this episode of ours. Atlanta Square Pantis did to my ears what the splinter did to my eyes. But let's go deep. One of them come close to how. Yeah. People hate this episode more than any of those. Well, for starters, Atlantis are to my eyes. But let's go deeper into why this is such a terrible piece of crap. It starts with SpongeBob going to pop before he gets the opportunity. Patrick blames the camera. Ready to go? You can go. I'll have three Krabby Patties. On second thought, cancel the order. Does this really have a song? Okay, then. Besides the fact that this is a song explaining that bubbles pop, the lyrics are extremely forced. This is a song explaining that bubbles pop. The lyrics are extremely. Siren! SpongeBob blows a bubble that encases the both of them. It lifts them off the ground and sends them careening into a random cave. The bubble bottom museum. We cut to Mr. Krabs being his usual greedy self, charging people to get into the museum on a day when it's supposed to be free. When he's off the building, and it just so happens that Squidward is already there. Of Atlantis, and thinks that SpongeBob stole it. In her tail. It turns out that SpongeBob didn't steal the amulet of another half of it. While Squidward is ranting on about Atlantis, I'm just thinking of if the writers actually know what an amulet is. To be worn around your neck, not a big fat medallion. SpongeBob and Patrick learn of the oldest living bubble. They call it. <laughs> Come on, really? A fucking bubble? You guys can do better than that. Hello, worthless students. I'm your new instructor. No one's ever failed my class. Let's live through it. Try. Oh, and Sandy just so happily butting into their conversation about Atlantis. So we spent like three minutes. Woodward likes art. SpongeBob and Patrick like bubbles. And conversation about Atlantis. So we spent like three minutes establishing that Mr. Pro opened the way to Atlantis. Yeah. Squidward is able to laser, which causes a van to drop out of the ceiling. Then the amulet goes into the van because sling. Then the amulet goes into the van because it's magic. Yeah. Inside the van we get inside the van we get. Oh, it's very hard work to blend 2D characters with 3D animation. It's a good thing these guys are. It's very hard work to blend 2D characters with trying. Unfortunately, the van is out of fuel for forward motion to fuel to do anything with it. So our heroes push the van out of the museum, turns to a gas station, but it doesn't have a gas tank because it's a gas station, but it doesn't have a gas tank because it fuels. Instead, it runs on song, which means that the... Right, you later. something remotely pleasing. Yeah, yeah. Why not, boy? Bacon. Yeah, man. Bye, Jay. 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 Bye, and we cut the What kind of exhaust does song create? Strangers, a tour of his escapes from an exhaust pipe. What can we do with this tyrant, Captain Squidward? Lyrics are forced, but it's more like they're struggling in desperation. No! This is dear people, Squidward. This is what they're proud of. You know, those an art style than what they normally do, but they've got to have a reason for it beyond substituting style for substance. As for the actual song, let's not give ourselves and use the song that they wanted to use. Yeah, this is a major ripoff of Willy Wonka. Yeah, that looks so futuristic. It looks like the Commodore 64.
Yeah, this is a major ripoff of Willy Wonka. He's out of the group. Then they go to a group. Then they go to a lab full of high-tech gear. Yeah, that looks so futuristic. People would have more functionality. Exer, if you want to show us a lab, give us some of those electric orbs, Tesla coils going off, or maybe even an everlasting gobstopper. Size some creativity. If you want to show us a lab, give us some of those electric orbs, Tesla coils going off, or maybe even an everlasting gobstopper machine. Instead, we get a machine that turns anything into ice cream. The practical applications for that board would have more functionality on it. Exercise some creativity. Give us some of those electric or maybe even an everlasting gobstopper machine. Instead, we get a machine that are infinite. Some people to fight germs hand to hand. All right, head of the game. SpongeBob Squidward. Go for a Krabby Patty. I'm holding a local Krusty Krab right now. Extremely advanced civilization goes into an NES game. Actually, that's not fair. NES games put effort into their visuals, their enemy designs, and their sound direction. Speaking of which, it's a sound direction. Speaking of which, it's about that. Oh, I'm afraid the crew insists, sir. That's right, this gives us two songs. Well, somebody has to step up, fight that monster, and become captain. And that somebody is me. Trust me, buddy. No, you don't. Buddy, no, you don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would I want to be captain of such a sorry bunch of... In the episode burp. Speaking of which, it's Squidward's turn. Not buying it. But this song is just stretching itself way too hard. <laughs> Fast attempt at it. Apparently, this bubble is improvisation because I don't fucking know. That's it. Well, then, I'm gonna do the worst thing I can do to your old dime. Back at the beginning, the bubbles were popping before the camera went off. If they can't get the big details down, why am I? We cut to the others eating spaghettios. Uh, well, that was anticlimactic. Again. And when questioned, Patrick spills the beans. <laughs> Atlantis, but it turns out the bubble. And the War Royal Highness reveals the real fate. I would call that totally pointless. Oh wait, I don't! That was the climax. Sandy, the totally incompetent guard who uses his weapons. And you know, SpongeBob at all. You know what I find funny? It's the climax of an episode, but not the fact- I'm gonna get the bug in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys get over something you figured out how to carry billions of light years through, get shoot onto the bus, the animal gets Atlantis Square Pantus. Had any plot? The first one of them, anyway. Yeah, considering Sponge all your fire, we're still doing shit like this. Anytime that the story didn't take a break to throw us into a silly Wonka, and the songs themselves, nice. Especially compared to the schlock that these four assholes shoveled down old Twilight Sparkle. At least after these four assholes shoveled down Secure, but at least it holds its own story and didn't rely on stupid visual gimmicks that didn't require any real effort. One writer, found the mysterious Mr. Enter, and I'm out.